Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. We are really excited to show you guys the actual head-to-head -head comparison between these 10 200 watt solar panels. Right here, I have my father-in-law, Jeff. You guys have seen him in a lot of other videos on the channel, especially um, these head-to-head -head comparison videos. And we're just really excited to see how each of these panels perform. Now they are priced from $250 all the way up to $600. But Jeff, which one's gonna be the best one? Well, you would think it would be the one that uh, costs the most, but that's not necessarily the case, as we'll find out. For sure. Don't judge these, these panels by the fact that we aren't going to be measuring exactly what the manufacturer says, because not any of them are going to really uh, match up to that. Uh, but we're comparing them against each other uh, in the same solar uh, conditions today mm -hmm. and the same test equipment. And one of the things that we've come up with is this actual solar stand so that we can angle all these the exact same way right at the sun so we can get the most power. And we're using the can trick to get them perfectly angled at the sun. Basically what we're gonna do is just jump into the actual results we got on each of these panels and we'll break down all the information at the end using a bunch of different graphs. So if you wanna see all the analytics in real detail, uh, stick around to the end of the video. So Jeff, let's just jump into testing these. Sounds good. Now, as for the solar conditions today, it's around 85 degrees. Now we do have fairly clear skies. We're gonna make sure we test when it's clear, but we do have a little bit of haze, so we're not expecting max power today, but at least we can compare them head to head. So the first panel that we're gonna be testing in our video is the all powers. Now we're gonna go in alphabetical order. We have lined the panel up to the sun. Now this panel is rated at 200 watts, so let's go ahead and connect it up and see how many watts we get. So Jason, uh, we have uh, several different meters here to uh, measure the uh, power. Uh, we got the Fluke, we got an Amprobe, uh, fairly accurate uh, current clamp meter, and we got just an inline uh, power meter. The, um, the Fluke is at 17.1 volts, 8.92 amps, uh, 153 watts. The voltage and amps are pretty similar on this one. Now the next test that I like to do with each of these panels is to see how they perform in partial shading. Basically how this works is each one of these panels is wired together and certain panels can be wired together in series or certain panels can be wired together in parallel. So if they're wired together in parallel, you see really good partial shading results. If they're wired together in series, you'll lose all power. So I have this piece of cardboard here. We're gonna place it in the middle of the panel and we'll see how much power we get now. With uh, partial shading, it looks like we're uh about half power, 17.72 volts, 4.46 amps, 78.7 watts. So the all powers panel is wired together in parallel, so it does perform really well in partial shading. So let's go ahead and move on to the next panel. So the next panel that we're gonna be testing is the Blue Eddy PV200. Now I have tested the PV200 in the past, but I found out that that panel actually had some physical damage and it was not getting peak power. So this is a brand new panel I've gone through the warranty replacement with Bluetti on it. So this is the PV200, it's rated at 200 watts. So let's go ahead and connect it up and see what we get. On the PV200 panel, we're getting 16.57 volts, 10.18 amps uh, for 169 watts. So now with the PV200, we're gonna go ahead and put on the piece of cardboard to see how it does with partial shading. For uh, partial shading, uh, we're getting about half power, 17.8 volts, 4.9 amps, 87 watts. So the PV200 is also wired together in parallel, so it has really good partial shading results. Let's move on to the next panel. So the next panel that we're gonna be testing in the video is the SeaTechy 200 watt panel. This is also quad full design, just like the previous two panels. So we have it lined up and everything here. Let's go ahead and see how much power we're getting. On the SeaTechy panel, we are getting 15.7 volts, 9.15 amps for 144 watts. In the next test, let's go ahead and test the SeaTechy 200 with partial shading. So I'm gonna put this here in the middle and we'll see how much power we get. For the SeaTechy uh, partial shading, we're getting 16.1 volts, 4.70 amps, 75 watts. So the SeaTechy 200 is also wired together in parallel. So we get good partial shading results. Let's move on to testing the next panel. Now the next panel that we're gonna be testing is the EcoFlow 220 watt bifacial panel. So this one's special. It actually can get sun on the back of it to give you a little bit of extra power. So actually having this on concrete is one of the best ways to get extra power from a bifacial panel. So we have this set up and angled at the sun. Let's go ahead and connect it up and see how much power we get. 
So on the uh, EcoFlow panel, we are getting 15.39 volts, 12.38 amps, and 190 watts. So now that we've tested the peak power on the EcoFlow 220 watt panel, let's go ahead and do some partial shading testing. So I put the cardboard on there. Let's see what power we're getting now. Like the other panels we've tested, this one is also wire, wired in uh, parallel. And we're getting 15.7 volts, 6.35 amps, and 99 watts. So fairly good results when testing with partial shading. This is also the most power that we've seen out of all the panels we've tested so far. So let's go ahead and see if uh, we can get more wattage than this one. We'll move on to the next panel. So the next panel that we'll be testing in the video is actually the Elikanta 200 watt panel. Now this is a panel a lot of people ask about, so I'm excited to test this one out. Let's go ahead and connect it up and see how much power we get. The uh, Elikanta 200 uh, panel is giving us 15.43 volts, 10 amps, and 154 watts. Let's go ahead and do the partial shading test for the Elikanta 200. I'm going to put the cardboard here in the middle, so are we going to lose all the power or just half the power? Partial uh, shading results on the LE Conta 200 panel uh, reveals 16.89 volts, 4.98 amps, and 80 watts. Kind of jumping around. Okay, so still pretty good partial shading results for the LE Conta 200. These are wired together in parallel. Let's move on to the next panel. Okay, so the next panel that we're going to be testing is the Ocotel 200 watt panel. This is also a quad fold design with an ETFE coating. I'm excited to see how this one does. So let's go ahead and connect it up and see how many watts we get. On the Ocotel 200 watt panel, we're getting 15.97 volts, 10.35 amps, and 165 watts. Now I've gone ahead and put a piece of cardboard in the middle of the Ocotel 200 watt panel just to see if this is wired together in series or parallel. So let's see how this does in partial shading. Partial shading for the Ocotel solar panel, we're getting 16.9 volts, 5.14 amps, and 86 watts. Okay, so the Ocotel 200 watt panel actually is wired together in parallel, so we got good partial shading results on this one. Now we've tested six panels so far. We have four left to test. Let's jump into the next one. So the next panel that we're going to be testing in the video is the Ugreen 200 watt panel. Now what's cool about this panel is it actually has a little uh, level indicator to know if you're pointing directly at the sun. So let's go ahead and plug this one in and see how much power we get. Now just FYI, I actually connected up this panel and the polarity was backwards. And then I looked at the MC4 connections and they're wired backwards as well. So just FYI, the MC4 adapter that came with the Ugreen panel is actually backwards. Okay, for the uh, Ugreen uh, 200 watt panel, uh, we are getting 15.7 volts, 9.3 amps, and 146 watts. We're going to go ahead and move forward with the partial shading test on the Ugreen. So I put the piece of cardboard here. Let's see if we get half power or lose all the power output from the panel. On the Ugreen panel with partial shading, we are getting 16.1 volts, 4.66 amps, and 74 watts. Now that we've finished the partial shading test on the Ugreen 200 watt panel, let's go ahead and move on to the next panel. Now I've gone ahead and put the next panel here on the stand. Now this is the VCU tech panel. It's actually a trifold design, so it's actually a little taller and uh, more narrow. So it's actually a little easier to pack away and to carry around. Uh, this is rated at 200 watts. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see what we get. On the VCU Tech 200 watt panel today, we are getting 17.5 volts, 9.0 amps, and 159 watts. So let's go ahead and partially shade the VCU Tech. I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard here in the middle panel. So let's see if we get, you know, two thirds of the power or we lose it all. On the VCU Tech partial shading, voltage is 16.56, but the uh, current is almost 0 0.02 amps and that leads to about 0.3 watts. So that really cut the power down. So this appears to be the first panel that we've tested that's wired in series. Now we did some tests. We put this over here and got like 25 watts. We put this down here like this and got like 60 watts. So it kind of depends on where the shade is, but just be aware if this has significant shade on it, you will be losing pretty much all the power um, that this panel puts out. 
Now the next panel that we're going to be testing is the Vigorpool 200 watt panel. This is a quad fold design, so let's go ahead and connect it up and see how many watts we get. On the Vigorpool 200 watt panel, we are getting 16.3 volts, 9.65 amps, and 158 watts. Now I've gone ahead and put the piece of cardboard in the middle of the Vigorpool 200 watt panel. Let's see if we lose all the power or if we still get 50% output. With partial shading, looks like we're getting 17.12 volts, 4.39 amps, and 75 watts. So the Vigorpool panel was wired together in parallel as well. So we saw really good partial shading results on this one. Let's move on to testing the last panel. Now the next panel that we're gonna be testing is the XTAR SP150. Now you'll notice that this is actually the same size as all the other panels that we've tested, except for they've derated the wattage on this one so it's more accurate to the output. It's rated at 150 watts, still quad full design. So let's go ahead and connect this up and see how much power we actually get. On the XTAR SP150, we are getting 15.54 volts, 9.16 amps, and 143 watts. I will say though that uh, it looks like there's been just slight high clouds move in and we, I saw 156 watts just prior to that, but we can't get it recorded on the camera. Now that we've tested the XTAR SP150, let's go ahead and test partial shading. So I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard in the middle. Let's see if we get half the power or no power at all. Partial shading on the XTAR SP150 is giving us 15.7 volts, 4.87 amps and 76 watts. So the XTAR SP150 is wired together in parallel, so we get really good partial shading results on it. We're actually gonna test one other panel. It's actually two panels. Jeff has um, these Balder 120 watt panels that come in at a really good price. They're right around $160 on Amazon. So we wanna see how those two panels stack up against all these other panels that we've tested because they might be more affordable and give us more power. These are the Balder 120s. So we're interested to see how much power we can get with these connected in parallel. So we connected them together in parallel and we plugged them in. Let's see how many watts we're getting. The Balder 120 watt panels in parallel, two of them, is giving us about 16 volts, 10.94 amps and 175 watts. In the next section of the video, I wanna go ahead and test partial shading on both these panels put together in parallel. Now, because these are wired in parallel, what you could do is you could actually shade one of these completely and you'll get full power out of the other one. But we wanna see what happens if you shade both of them at the same time. So we're testing to see if they're wired in parallel um, this way. So let's go ahead and see how many watts we're getting with this cardboard on here. So with partial shading on these uh, Balder 120 panels, we are seeing 16.6 volts. 5.38 amps and 89 watts. So fairly good results while testing the Balder 120s with the partial shading. So they are in fact wired together in parallel. And so what we'll do next is we're actually going to break down all the information in a bunch of different graphs so you guys can see how they stack up against each other. And then after that, what we'll do is we'll actually talk about the testing equipment that we use. So thank you guys for watching till this section in the video. Really appreciate you sticking around. And thank you, Jeff, for joining uh, me in this comparison video. You bet, glad to be here. Awesome, let's jump into the other content. Well, now that we've gone ahead and tested all the panels and we know the performance of each one, let's break down all this information in a few different graphs. Now, the first graph that we wanna look at is the peak wattage results. Remember, the higher the number, the better. So if you're looking for the highest performing panel just in wattage, then this is the graph that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. We have the higher performing panels on the left and the lower performing panels on the right. And I've also broken this down into full sun performance numbers and partial shading numbers. So the best performing panel was the EcoFlow 220, put out 190 watts. The next best panel was the Balder 120, both those panels in parallel at 175 watts and then the Blue Eddy PV200 at 169 watts. The lowest performing panels were the Ugreen 200 and the c 200 at 144 watts. And we have a good balance of power in the middle. Now the VCU Tech was the only panel that did not do well in partial shading, so if you do wanna purchase that panel, you'll wanna make sure that it's in full sun so that it can get its full power. Now in the next graph, I wanna break down the panels for which one provides the best value or the best cost per watt analysis. The lower the number is basically a better deal on that panel. So you can see we have the best deals on the left and the worst deals on the right. 
looking at a value perspective. So the VCU Tech 200 comes in at the cheapest price per watt, meaning for every watt it produces, it's $1.57. And there's quite a few panels under $2 a watt, which is pretty good value. Moving up to the more expensive panels, you can see the Vigorpool 200 is $3.79 per watt produced, and the EcoFlow 220 is also $2.89 per watt produced. So instead of looking at a raw output perspective here, we're looking at which panel gives us the best value for our dollar. So if you're looking for a good deal, you're gonna to wanna to stick with a panel on the left-hand side. You're gonna to wanna to avoid a panel on the right-hand side because they're more expensive. Now in the next graph, I wanna see if I can find a good balanced option between performance and cost. I know some viewers don't wanna go just buy the cheapest panel, and I know some viewers don't wanna go buy the most expensive panel to get the most power, so where is the value in between? Well, I put some of the best options here on the graph. So let's break this down to see if we can find any outliers. Well, looking at the left, you can see the Balder 120s, two of them in parallel. We still get a lot of power output at 175 watts, but the cost per watt is very low at $1.83. So that's good value there. The next best option that sticks out to me is the VCU Tech 200. We get 159 watts, but it's priced at $1.57 per watt. And then the All Powers, even though it puts out 153 watts, it only costs $1.66 per watt, so a very good value there. So you gotta look around and try to balance some of the options here, but hopefully this graph gives you a good idea of what's available. Now because these are folding and portable panels, I do feel like weight plays a big aspect in which panel you purchase. So I've broken down the weights for each of these panels. The lighter panels are on the left, the heavier panels are on the right. The two lightest panels that we tested were the Eliconta 200 at 11.4 pounds and the All Powers 200 at 12.4 pounds. The two heaviest panels were the two Balder 120s in parallel at 19.2 pounds and the EcoFlow 220 came in at a whopping 24.1 pounds. So if weight is important to you and you want to have a lighter panel, you're gonna to wanna to stick to a panel on the left-hand side of this chart. Now it's been super fun to put all this information together in these different graphs, so hopefully this has been helpful. Now everyone has a different budget and use case, so I don't want to recommend one specific panel, but by using these graphs, hopefully you'll find something that works well for you. Now down in the video description, I have all the product links and the discount codes. Now just keep in mind, this video has been a ton of work, so I've included affiliate links down there to support the channel. So if you want to support the channel, please purchase through those affiliate links. They do not cost any extra money to you, but they provide me a small kickback when you purchase those products. So Jeff, now that we've finished all the testing on the panels, I thought it'd be nice to actually break down the equipment that we're using so people understand um, that we do have some high quality equipment here to try to get the most accuracy when testing these panels. So Jeff, do you want to break down some of the equipment that you brought? First of all, we uh, discharged a uh a battery down waste so that we we knew that uh, the charge controller would it would accept a charge we're using this uh, blue sky a maximum powerpoint tracking mppt charge controller uh, we're we're counting on it finding the uh, the maximum powerpoint on each of these uh, solar panels and then as far as our our meters go we're using a fluke that's measuring the input voltage and we've got a um, a meter that is got some pretty good resolution uh, it's an Ampro LH41, and most of these clamp meters only have one decimal point accuracy. This one's got a couple of decimal points, and uh, so we're going to be able to uh, measure some accurate current. Uh, we've got another meter that is an in-series power meter. It's by What's Up, um, and I'm not sure they make it anymore, but we have verified that what we're seeing on that uh, display uh, is what we're getting here. So we've got a couple of different means of uh, validating our measurements. And uh, so we feel that what we're measuring is pretty accurate. Um, we've actually had the panels laying out so that they're all the same temperature, so the numbers are all the same. But uh, just a little background on all the testing that we've done here. So hopefully that gives you guys a good understanding of the equipment we're using. And we're trying to make it as accurate as possible and to give us the you know, peak power in the current conditions today. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this head-to-head -head comparison solar testing video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button, and I'll recommend a couple other videos if you haven't seen my content before. Maybe you'll like those ones too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.